Hey guys, technology is changing so fast it's really hard to keep up, isn't it? This is the new MH2 quadcopter by Hovership. You can go to their site at hovership.com like I did. Download the plans for this 3D frame. There are a lot of options on this thing, long arms, short arms. You'll notice it's got a vibration isolation here so we can mount a camera on the top. And it's actually designed to hold a GoPro right here on the front, but I've chosen to use an FPV camera. So you can either print this thing yourself or you can go to the hover ship and buy the pre-printed frame yourself probably much cheaper than most frames and you'll have a, a ready to fly camera mount get cheap parts off the internet and slap this thing together in just a few hours so let's see how we go about doing that all right this is the hardware that we're all gonna have to start with you can either buy this from how the hover ship or you can print it yourself and since I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy I went ahead and printed these myself on my own 3d printer but eh, if you don't have one you can just buy it You'll need two complete sections. This is known as the dirty section, so make sure you print out a base, and that's the one with this weird geometric design on the bottom to give it strength, and then the top plate for the base, and that's going to sandwich all of our ESCs, and uh, our arms are going to fit inside of here, and all the parts, all the wires are going to pass through these two holes right here into the upper section. This is known as the clean section, and it's going to be isolated from the bottom by I'm sorry, with these little rubber dampeners. You'll need six of these. You get them on eBay. They're about a quarter a piece. Anyway, uh, this will be held off by our standoffs, and our standoffs are here. You'll need eight of those. Again, that's about three bucks on eBay, and that will sandwich all of our electronics and all of that. You will need some arms. Or you have a, about three or four choices of arms. If you want to run five-inch props, uh, this is called the tough arm. Uh, I'm only going to be running 5 inch props because I've got some old 1806 engines and they won't run any props bigger than that. But anyway, you can print these. There's another version of this, the original version. It doesn't look nearly as cool. And then there's the longer version that will fit 6 inch props. Okay, you will need some hardware. Uh, you can either buy the hardware kit from Hovership, but um, I got they were sold out so I went ahead and went to Home Depot. You just need some M3 screws. Uh, these are 15 millimeter, 5 millimeter. I'll detail all of this in the description and tell you exactly what you need. But basically, all of those screws run you. It's about four dollars, give or take a few pennies at uh, at Home Depot. One thing I do recommend you buy from Hovership is this tiny little circuit board, and this is your power distribution. It's the smallest, most compact one I think I've ever seen. Looks like it's going to work out quite well. The last thing you'll need to get are these little standoffs for your flight controller. Most flight controllers come with these, but if yours doesn't, you can get these. They're called uh, flight controller standoffs. They're, I think they're six millimeter, and they run about two dollars. So there we are. We're about ten dollars worth of hardware into this thing so far. Let's go ahead and push all this stuff out of the way and take a look at some of the electronics that you're going to need. Well, we really don't need a heck of a lot of stuff to go in this little quad. We're going to need a brain, and, and this is a Naze 32 clone. You can get these on eBay. Well, I've seen them ranging in price from 25 bucks to 55 bucks. I got this one from Multi Multi Rotor Mania, and they come in two versions, uh, twenty-three dollars, and then they have for the Acro version, and then this one has a barometer on it right there, right above my thumb, with those two little holes. That is. Um, I think that's 33 bucks for that one. Anyway, uh, you'll need a camera. This is a $22 PZ0420 from eBay. You'll need one of these little SMA extensions so you don't tear up your transmitter. And I'll show you how that works a little bit later. But you want the four inch version, that's three bucks. You're going to need a video transmitter. This is a, an immersion 5.8 gig. Pretty nice little transmitter. It's left over from another build. Um, this is a long range receiver. You really don't need it for this little quad, but it's what I have in the box, and so I'm in my parts box, so that's what I'm going to use. It's nice and very, very light, uh, so it'll work out perfect. It's four channel. You're going to want a couple of these JST connectors, and I would urge you to consider using these because they're indexed. They can't go in backwards, and that way you know you're never going to hook up your plus to your negative and, uh, and pop something. So get a couple of these, and uh, very, very cheap. I think they're about a quarter a set. And I'll show you how we're going to use those. We're not going to mess with that. You're going to need some motors. These are these are the 1806s left over from another build. I've seen motors on eBay in the 1800 class for uh, I think it was $12. Uh, unbelievable, 50 bucks for a set of motors. 
And then lastly, you're going to need some ESCs. These are off of a quad that got run over by a flock of geese about a week ago as they were migrating. So this is all that's left of that quad and it's probably the only parts that survived when it hit the ground. These are 12 amp Tiger. I got the sticker here. Uh, they're just little 12 ampers, but they'll work fine for these little motors. So let's take this and start putting everything together on the dirty part uh, of our frame. All right, this really shouldn't take you long to get to this step. Um, what we do is take one screw and put it in each arm. It just kind of holds them in place. They'll still rotate around. Go ahead and mount all four of your motors. And if you have jacks on your motors, you can plug them directly into your ESCs. But you can see I, I'm not doing that. I'm going to solder direct. When you run your wires, make sure you run them on the inside because at some point later you might want to fold this thing and take it with you. And if your wires on the outside, it's going to lever them out of your ESC. So put them on the inside and, and you can tie them down. Um, when you get your motors in place, kind of get your wires cut roughly to the length that you want. Cut the positive and the negative from each ESC. And what I did is I just used a zip tie to hold them in place so I can get my spacing of my wires about right. I did the same thing with that small power distribution board in the middle. That's a permanent installation with a zip tie, and then I can start soldering my ESCs to it. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and solder my wires from my motors directly to the ESCs, and then I'm going to slide a shrink wrap, and I'm going to shrink wrap this. So I'm going to have to cut that, shrink wrap it, and then put a new zip tie on there. Um, one thing you want to pay attention to, when the wires come out of the motor, for simplicity, Let's just call them one, two, and three. So when they come out, try to keep them in order. Or actually, don't try. You actually have to keep them in order. So when you solder them, the front left and the front right, or the rear right, it'll be one, two, three. They'll be in sequence, soldered, or plugged into your ESC. The front right and the front left, they won't be one, two, three. It'll be like one, three, two. You'll have to reverse uh, two of the wires. That's because on this one, it's going to be turning clockwise. In order to get it to turn clockwise, we've got to reverse those wires. If, if you use the jacks, it's not a big deal. You can unplug it and switch it. But if you're soldering it, it's really pretty important that you get it correct now. So one, two, and three on the front left and the rear right. And then one, three, two, or reverse one, the wires on the front right and the rear left. So go ahead and do that and solder everything down and then uh, we'll start putting the next layer on here. Well, it's starting to get a little bit crowded, like a bus station during rush hour. But that's only because we went ahead and soldered on our two power jumpers, for one for our video camera and the other for our uh, video transmitter. And then we've also put on our power cord for our battery. And that's it, There's not enough room on the top, so what I did is I ran it along the side through those two slots ran it along the, the bottom just like that and just cable tied it in place. So that's what we're going to deal with since we know this is the rear. Let's save ourselves just a little bit of trouble. I'm using a naze. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. That's how they number. And since we know that, uh, go ahead and number whatever power, uh, whatever flight controller you're using, go ahead and put numbers or mark with a mark slot or something to identify which motor is which because later we don't want to take this thing back apart to figure it all out. So what we're going to do now, we're done with the really the hard part. We're going to take all these cables, we're going to thread them up through the top plate, the, or actually the top of the bottom plate, and uh, we're going to start installing the rest of the equipment. So go ahead and tie this down, and we'll get to the next step. All right, once you got your dirty section put together, go ahead and put in all six of your dampeners, and then take your cables and thread them up through the clean plate and then get ready to put the clean plate on. But before you do, go ahead and mount all eight of your posts. It's easier to get at those screws now than later. And then once you've done that, uh, go ahead and get a... I use a sharp a probe and feed these dampeners up through the six holes on the clean plate. All right, that wasn't too bad. We got all our wires threaded through those holes. We got all six of our uh, dampeners threaded through there. That was the biggest fight. And now what we're going to do is take our flight controller. We're going to put it in place. And I have a naze, and it doesn't matter what you're using. When you look at your flight board, there's going to be some kind of little arrow indicating the front of the aircraft. So this should be pointed like that, and that means our USB is going to be there. And if we do that, let's see, it would be like that. There's our USB. If we plug him in there like that, it's going to put all of our ESC connections, our motor connections on the outside. I don't think that's a good idea. 
and it also means that our USB, so we want to program it, it's going to be kind of difficult to get at. So all software has uh, an ability to tell it that you've rotated your board. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to rotate this naze 90 degrees clockwise. We're going to put them in like that. And that puts the USB right here, so it's easy for us to do updating of our PIDs or whatever. And all of our motors are protected up here on the front, so they're not going to get smashed during a crash. So that's a good reason. Just remember to tell your software. If you don't, you're going to be flying this dude sideways. So go ahead and put your, your flight controller in, connect your motors, and then we'll get on to putting uh, our receiver on. All right, guys, here's what I decided to do. I'm going to put my radio receiver on the top of the top plate, and that's because it's got a flexible antenna so that no leverage can be put on this uh, pretty delicate SMA connection right here. So even if, with, when I crash, not if I crash, but when I crash, I'll bend the antenna, but I won't snap off that SMA. I just ran, I'm going to run PPM, which means I'm only going to be using one cable. I'm going to run it down through the little Hover Things logo there to the bottom and I'll be able to plug it directly onto the, the uh, NAS32 right there, just one plug. You'll also see I've, I've gone ahead and positioned my 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter. Um, I just zip tied this to the bottom and the important part of this is this cable right here, this little $3 extension cable is actually going to save me about $70 because that's what this receiver costs. So when I connect my antenna, as you see right here on the top, through this hole that they already put up here for us, for this exact purpose, um, I'm going to connect this cable directly to the transmitter, and that way when I crash, and I put a lot of tension on this, in other words I break this, it's going to break, probably not the housing, it's probably going to break the uh, plastic, or it might even smash that up pretty good. I'm not too worried about the antenna. Uh, they're fairly cheap. The transmitters are not. So I won't be putting any pressure at all on this uh, SMA connector right here. So there you go. Um, my power cables are already rigged up. This is the power cable going to my video transmitter and this is the way it comes from the factory. All pre-prepared. I'm just going to plug it in like so. And you'll notice I have uh, already fixed the power cable for my video transmitter. I mean for my camera to connect it to the video transmitter is the video right here. Again a standard cable. I'm only going to be using the yellow, the video. And we're just going to plug it right in the back of there. And then we can tie everything down. So let's do that and then we'll be talking about the camera. I got something special for you. Well that thing's starting to look like a quad. Now let's talk about the last step. We got our plug hanging out there for our camera and we have a 10 degree plate already pushed down inside of the mount right here. So let's, let's talk about cameras. Uh, this thing is designed for the GoPro. Um, it doesn't matter which, mo which model, it'll just sit. Let me move that plug out of the way. It will sit right there in the front. And it's kind of a press fit and you'll notice it's got about a 10 degree angle, which is what you want because when these things fly, they're generally flying fast and you don't want your camera pointing down at the ground. It's better to see where you're going. Now you can use the GoPro if you want to use this as your flight camera. Uh, you can buy these small plugs. They're called GoPro adapters. This is the manufacturer. You get them on eBay. They're two dollars, super cheap, but they take about a month to arrive from uh, from Taiwan. Anyway, it plugs right here in the side, just where you you charge it, and it kind of sits flush. And it'll fit in there. The the thing about the GoPro, if you try to use it, you can only use, and again, this is your video feed and your ground right here. Just connect that right into your transmitter and you're ready. You can't use the power off of the Immersion RC 5.8 gigahertz. It doesn't supply enough current. So don't even think about hooking this up. Nothing good will come of it. But you can use the GoPro uh, as your flight camera. It's a standard USB and you'll notice this is a Mobius. The GoPro weighs about 80 grams. This one weighs about 40 grams. It has the same USB. So you can use this also as a flight camera. And the nice thing about the Mobius is that you move this cord out of the way. It just kind of slides right up in there. And so you keep your center of gravity back and you can just use the same straps to hold it down. Pretty neat little camera. The thing about the GoPro and the Mobius is they got a very slight latency, a little bit of lag time, so most people won't notice it, but if you're flying fast and proximity flying around trees and stuff, you know, that couple of milliseconds might make a difference to you. 
I'm not going to be using these as my flight cameras. I'm going to, I've taken my PZ0420 and I've 3D printed this little container for it. I've left the openings in the back for the plugs. And I'm going to mount it on this 10 degree mount. I'm going to tie it down and that's what I'm going to use as my flight camera. No latency, pretty good quality picture. And then I'm probably going to take my GoPro because it is lighter and it'll keep my center of gravity back and probably rubber band him right up there on the top. And that's how I'm going to be flying. Not a bad looking little ride, is it? Pretty inexpensive. If you've got a 3D printer, I hope I've convinced you that the MH2 is the way to go. I'll put the link to their website so you can download the patterns or the plans for the frames. So you can print them out yourself. Or if you want to go to the Hover Things website and just buy the pre-printed ones, I'll uh, put that as well. They're pretty cheap. I'll also put the link to this uh, on Thingiverse for the plastic case for the camera in case you want to print those out. Anyway, fellas, there you go. Thanks for your time and happy flying. Oh yeah, probably the most important tip of all, the whole video build. Buy plenty of those. You're going to need them.